Hello, my name is Leila Hayashi and I'm here to give an update about the Capaficus farming in Brazil. To begin, I will present a brief contextualization of the beginning of the cultivation of these species in Brazil. Capaficus alvarese was legally introduced for the first time in 1994 in the state of Sao Paulo in a joint project by the University of Sao Paulo and Sao Paulo Fisheries Institute. At the time, the person responsible for the project was Professor Edson José de Paula. In 1998, a company called Sete Ondas Biomar obtained the license to cultivate the species on the south coast of Rio de Janeiro, between the municipalities of Angra dos Reis and Ilha Grande. This was the first commercial farm of Capaficus in Brazil. Although the cultivation has been successful in both São Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, there are currently no commercial farms. In these states, at least seven production cycles were established in floating hefts made by PVC pipes. Among the main challenges found are the distance from the marine farms to landing point and processing of seaweeds, increasing the production costs and the delay in issuing license for cultivation. In 2008, propagos from Sao Paulo were introduced in Florianópolis, Santa Catarina, in a project developed by the Federal University of Santa Catarina and the Agricultural Research and Extension Company of Santa Catarina, EPAGRI. And why Santa Catarina? because the state is responsible for 98% of shellfish production in Brazil, and there are already marine farms implemented throughout the state. For this reason, we decided to develop seaweed cultivation using technology close to the mollusks cultivation. As I mentioned before, the propagules were donated by Edson José de Paula Seaweed Laboratory of the University of São Paulo and transferred to the Plant Cell Biology Laboratory of Federal University of Santa Catarina, where they remained in quarantine for 11 months. During this period, biomass was produced following all biosafety protocols. After the quarantine period and with the Brazilian Institute for the Environment and Renewable Natural Resource Authorization, these propagules were transferred to the experimental farm of Sambaqui, located in the northern regions of Florianópolis, here, belonging to the Department of Aquaculture at UFSC. During the entire experimental cultivation at sea, Continuous monitoring of the surrounding rock shores were carried out and no propagule spreading or fixing were observed. However, one of the first significant challenges was the water strength in Florianópolis, which was completely different from the other place where the seaweed was grown in Brazil, such as São Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. Based on the traditional style of Tai Tai used in the Philippines and Indonesia, several types of mooring have been tested without success. So, we decided to test the tubular nets used in commercial farms in Rio de Janeiro and finally managed to start the crops. These tubular nets retain the plants inside, avoiding their spread and increase the productivity of marine farmers and also used in the cultivate, they are used in the cultivation of mussels. Another problem found was the fragility of the PVC pipes within the environmental conditions of Florianópolis. These pipes 
are used to build the floating habitat in other Brazilian regions that cultivate the species. But here, these tubes break easily, which requires high maintenance and increased in the production costs. In this case, we decide to develop our own buoys to cultivate the species based on the double long lines floats used in the mollusk's cultivation. These buoys are designed to be oval, 209 long, 20 cm high, 30 cm wide, and with approximately 9 kg. These buoys offer excellent stability of the hefts withstand extratropical storms and cyclones, and have a minimum durability of 8 to 10 years. They also have UVA and UVB protection. Besides, they were designed to be integrated with the cultivation of mollusks. Such integrated cultivation could increase the productivity and profits of marine farms, decrease the risks of monoculture, and minim minimize the effects of eutrophication. With that in mind, a harvest prototype was developed to serve both shellfish and seaweed cultivation. This prototype has a long loading ramp for tubular nets, pull it up by a traction pulley, and the tubular nets pass through rubber plates in case of mussels or wooden hole in seaweeds, which breaks, to, breaks the target organism mussels or seaweeds and they are collected in a conveyor. The power tools for the system was hydraulic for the low cost and security. This prototype was assembled and placed in a work vessel. This photo records the first field tests of the prototype. For more information, please access our YouTube link. The first results indicated the oper operational production capacity of 1.8 kilograms per second, or 6.6 .6 tons per hour, considering a tubular net of 2.6 meter and an average harvest of 30.6 kilograms of seaweed. The seaweed index damage was 0%, and the return index, or the amount of seaweed remaining in the tubular nets during the mechanized harvest, was 11.6%. This data should be improved in the next tests. Another challenge faced was the low winter temperatures. Santa Catarina has a subtropical climate and high rainfall. In the first three years of experimental cultivation, temperatures below 18 degrees during the winter months causing high seaweed mortality. Thus, tank cultivation was developed using effluents from marine shrimp hearing in bioflux to minimize, minimize the winter effects. This type of cultivation aims to maintain propagals until sea cultivation improves again, rather than grow the seaweed in tanks. The growth of propagals in bioflux effluents was as good as in one stosh solution, commonly used in in vitro cultivation. In addition, we observed that cultivation bioflux do not affect the carrageenan yield and even significantly increase the gel strength and the viscosity. Cultivation bioflux also increased the content of phenolic compounds flavonoids, and carotenoids. In the later case, even when combined with ascophilonodosum extract, the antioxidant potential has not been changed.
Concerning the height rainfall, the main associated problem is the drying of harvest seaweed for commercialization. In this sense, dryers are being developed together with the mechanical engineering of Ulfski. The idea is to adapt existing dryers for fruits and vegetables or develop a low-cost prototype. In 2017, at the request of the Brazilian Institute of the Environment and Renewable Natural Resource, the experimental marine farms were expanded to three new locations of the coast of Santa Catarina. So, our first experimental farm was in Florianópolis, in the North Bay, in Sambaqui Beach. So, we expanded to Ribeirão da Ilha, south part of the island, Governador Celso Ramos in the mainland of Santa Catarina and Peña in the north part of the state. After two years of implementing these new farms, the results were promising and again, there was no evidence of sewage dispersion outside the cultivation structure. This picture is from the Ribeirão da Ilha, south of the island of Florianópolis, in a commercial farm uh, Atlântico Sul. This is in the mainland of Santa Catarina, Governador Celso Ramos, and in Penha, in the north part of the state. Finally, after 12 years of experiments and negotiation with the Brazilian government, Santa Catarina obtained the authorization to cultivate commercially Capaficus alvarese in January of 2020. The next steps are already planned, but have been delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Gradually, we are starting our pilot project, which consists in implementing commercial marine farms with some producers and training them to transfer the technology to cultivation of the species and preparing a business plan. We also need to find solutions to the dryers, improve the tank cultivation and the harvest prototype and develop a planter to increase productivity on a commercial scale. I would like Professor Zenilda Bozon, who started the, the Capaficus project in Santa Catarina, and all students that along 12 years believe in this project. There are some of them here, but not all. Also, I would like to thank all team behind the project, and especially the researchers and technicians of Vipagri. I also would like to thank the financial support of these three Brazilian agencies, CAPS, CNPq and FAPESC. And thank you everyone for your attention. I will leave my contact for more information.